Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Prosimy zobaczyć suprememastertv.com ukośnik schedule. On March 11, 2020, Dr. Tetris Adenum Gabriasis, the Director General of the World Health Organization, declared, in the past two weeks, the number of cases of COVID-19 has increased 13-fold and the number of affected countries has tripled. In the days and weeks ahead, we expect to see the number of cases, the number of deaths and the number of affected countries climb even higher. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a global pandemic. How did this happen? How can we prevent it in the future? Pandemics, the key to prevention, part one of three. Continue watching to find out more. Caring viewers, I am Melvin. The people of the United States Virgin Islands are grateful that you are here in our world. We wish you much happiness and spiritual upliftment. Welcome to part one of our three-part series, Pandemics, the Key to Prevention. On today's episode, we'll examine the current global coronavirus pandemic and learn more about the root cause of this dangerous and fast-moving disease. In late December 2019, news of a strange new virus emerging in southern China began to surface. The virus, as it was reported, was highly contagious. The World Health Organization named it coronavirus disease, or COVID-19. Symptoms range from a dry cough to high fever, to difficulty in breathing. For many, the infection was mild, but for others, especially the elderly and those with underlying health conditions, the virus was potentially fatal. With the elasticity of the lungs being attacked, patients find it increasingly difficult to breathe, and death can be painful, similar to that experience while slowly drowning. COVID-19 proved to be extremely contagious and spread like wildfire through China's massive population. The government took swift action and other countries watched in dismay as China locked down entire cities in an effort to curb its spread. Millions of people were quarantined in their homes, allowed to leave only for food or medical supplies. Within days, new emergency hospitals were built but despite these far-reaching efforts, it was already too late. Thousands of people from all around the world had visited China for Lunar New Year. As they returned home, other nations began reporting cases, and within two months, COVID-19 has spread around the globe. On March 11, 2020, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, the Director General of the World Health Organization, declared the virus to be a global pandemic, stating, in the past two weeks, the number of cases of COVID-19 outside China has increased 13-fold, and the number of affected countries has tripled. In the days and weeks ahead, we expect to see the number of cases, the number of deaths, and the number of affected countries climb even higher. We are deeply concerned both by the alarming levels of spread and the severity. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a global pandemic. By early April 2020, COVID-19 has swept through 205 countries and territories. 
with 1.4 million confirmed cases and almost 75,000 deaths. The pandemic put much of the world on pause. Billions of people were self-quarantined for an indefinite period. Borders were closed. Flights canceled. Schools, including those of New York City, the largest public school system in the world, were closed. Except for essential service providers, people were asked to work from home. Hospitals operated beyond capacity, with many patients lying on the floor for lack of space. Retired doctors and nurses came out of retirement to help. At high risk to themselves, many of these heroic healthcare professionals also died. Desperate attempts were made to provide more hospital beds. For example, in the US, the Navy's 1,000-bed hospital ship, USNS Comfort, docked in New York City to provide beds for intensive care COVID-19 patients. Shortages of essential supplies dwindled, while scientists and medical researchers worked around the clock to develop a new vaccine to combat the virus. Within billions of hearts was an underlying sense of fear. People asked, why are we suffering through this virus? Where did it come from? How did it start? When we return, we'll continue with our exploration of the coronavirus pandemic. We'll be back after this message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our program. How did the coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic get started? What was its root cause? According to medical research, COVID-19 is a zoonotic disease, an infectious disease transmitted from animals to humans. It was traced to a so-called wet market in Wuhan, China. In this market, many different species of live sea and land animals were confined in cages or tubs of water stacked one on top of another, waiting to be slaughtered for human consumption. It is suspected that the COVID-19 virus originated in bats, was then transferred to pangolins or scaly anteaters, and finally to humans. While this scenario might sound random and highly unusual, it is, in fact, frighteningly common. Scientists have demonstrated that every pandemic the world has ever experienced over the past 100 years has originated from animals. Let's look at some of these events. One of the most devastating pandemics in history was the influenza outbreak of 1918. Researchers concluded that the virus responsible for the pandemic was avian-based. It is believed to have started in the Western world when an infected chicken, duck, or turkey was consumed by a human. This viral influenza was first discovered in the spring of 1918 and quickly spread among military personnel. Its symptoms included a high fever and feeling of malaise. During the spring of 1918, the flu was mild. Most people suffered only minor discomfort. Few died, and after a couple of months, the virus appeared to be over. However, in the fall of 1918, the influenza returned, this time with a vengeance. The virus had mutated, and the new strain was not only highly contagious, but also extremely deadly. Those most vulnerable were the very young and the elderly. But surprisingly, so were those in the prime of life, young adults 25 to 35 years old. And death from the disease was excruciating. Those infected suddenly developed blistering fevers, nasal hemorrhaging, and pneumonia. They died by drowning in their own fluid-filled lungs. This pandemic decimated the world, affecting more than 500 million people or one-third of the Earth's population, and worldwide, from 50 to 100 million people died. The 1918 influenza virus still exists today as the common flu. In 1957, a new influenza virus emerged in East Asia. Termed the Asian flu, or H2N2, this new virus was also avian-based. First reported in February 1957 in Singapore, it swept around the globe over the next year. By the end of 1958, it had claimed the lives of 1.1 million people. Then, 
In 1968, the next lethal influenza virus surfaced, first detected in Hong Kong. This new virus became known as the Hong Kong flu, or H3N2. Like the others, it was zoonotic and avian sourced. H3N2 was highly contagious. Within two weeks of its emergence, more than 500,000 people had been infected. It is estimated that more than a million people, mainly young children and the elderly, died from this avian-based disease. Then, in the 1970s, the world became aware of one of the most debilitating epidemics ever known. Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, AIDS, or Human Immunodeficiency Virus, HIV. AIDS is believed to have started in West Africa when a group of hunters slaughtered and ate infected chimpanzees. AIDS attacks the body's immune system until it can no longer ward off disease, and for many years, it was almost always fatal for those who contracted it. Over the years, AIDS has claimed the lives of 35 million people, and it is estimated that 40 million others are still living with HIV. The next new deadly disease to surface was the Ebola virus, which was first discovered in 1976 in Sudan and the Democratic Republic of Congo. But this outbreak was thankfully brief. Then, in January 1996 in North Gabon, some villagers killed, skinned, and ate a chimpanzee. Within days, 21 of the 37 people involved were dead. Scientists have determined that the Ebola virus can be transferred to chimpanzees from infected fruit bats. Although Ebola is not highly contagious, it is extremely lethal, killing up to 90% of the people it infects. Ebola reoccurred once again in 2014 in West Africa and continued for two years with 28,600 reported cases and 11,325 deaths. In 2003, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, SARS, emerged as yet another global pandemic. Similar to COVID-19, this zoonotic virus also started in a live animal market. SARS has been linked to civets, some of which were being sold in the market for human consumption. SARS had a high mortality rate, with 10% of those infected dying. Unfortunately, Although the disease had already been transferred to humans, health officials ordered the slaughter of all civets in captivity, and approximately 4,000 of these innocent animals were killed. Only six years later, in 2009, yet another pandemic, swine flu, or H1N1 virus, arose. This pathogen was first discovered in the U.S. among pigs living in crowded, filthy conditions on a factory farm. It was transferred to humans either through close contact or through consumption of infected pork. Over the next year, a possible 1.4 billion people were infected, and as many as 575,000 died, 80% of whom were under the age of 65. Unfortunately, in an attempt to prevent the spread of swine flu, countless pigs were also put to death. Millions of pigs were simply dumped into mass graves and buried alive. In 2012, another zoonotic virus called Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, was discovered in Saudi Arabia. This virus was first transferred from dromedary camels to humans, possibly through the drinking of raw camel milk or the consumption of camel meat. MERS is highly lethal, and approximately 35% of those infected die. In other pandemics, mad cow disease, or BSE, was transmitted from cows to humans who ate infected beef, and H5N1, 
avian or bird flu was transmitted to humans through close contact with or consumption of infected chickens or geese. All of these diseases, all of these deaths, all of this suffering, why are they happening again and again? And what of the future? The following is a summary of the epidemics and pandemics discussed today, the year each began and the number of deaths caused. Spanish flu, 1918, 50 to 100 million deaths. H2N2, 1957, 1.1 million deaths. H3N2, 1968, 1 million plus deaths. HIV or AIDS, mid to late 1970s to date, 35 million deaths. Variant Kreutzfeldt Jakob disease from mad cow disease or BSE, 1995. 178 deaths. Avian flu or H5N1, 2003, 455 deaths. SARS, 2003, 774 deaths. Swine flu or H1N1, 2009, 575,000 deaths. MERS, 2012, 858 deaths. Ebola, 2014 to 2016, 11,325 deaths. COVID-19, 2019 to date, 312,000 deaths. Precious viewers, please join us again on Monday, May 25th for Pandemics, The Key to Prevention, Part 2 of 3 as we continue to explore pandemics, their root cause, and how we can prevent them. Coming up next is Positive Changes in Countries, Part 15. Honorable Governments, Honorable Citizens, Costa Rica, the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire, and Croatia, right after noteworthy news. May we soon live in a compassionate vegan world, and may all pandemics become a thing of the past. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash PE.